everyone. Welcome to Around Town with Rotary. My name is Michael Harrington. This show is, uh, is put together every month by the Beverly Rotary Club. It gives us a chance to highlight some of the really interesting people we have in the Beverly Rotary Club. We have over 100 members from all different backgrounds, and all of them have very unique careers and stories to tell. And we also will focus on some of the great activities that the Beverly Rotary Club has going on around town. So welcome to our show today. I'd like to introduce my, my co-host, Al Temkin, and Al will introduce our very special guest here today. Take it away, Al. Well, thank you, Mike. Uh, it is absolutely my pleasure to introduce a long-term Rotarian and very good friend to both Mike and me, Elizabeth Maycumber. Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Great, thanks for having me. Oh, it was, it's our pleasure, believe me. So before we get into uh, your very impressive career, Elizabeth, and, and your connection to Rotary, let's talk a little bit about your personal life. Tell us a little bit about your family and where you guys are now and all of that neat stuff. Sure, well, my husband, John, and I have lived here in Beverly for over 35 years now. And uh, we raised our family here. Uh, they attended all the Beverly public schools and we're very fortunate to, uh, even though they're not here in town, but to have great relationships with them and including uh, our grandchildren. Of which is how many now? Well, two with a third on the way. Ah, uh, good for you. That's awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> That's terrific. Now, where did you where did you grow up, Elizabeth? Where, where, where did you go to school? So, well, I grew up in Mid Coast, Maine, in a town called Rockland, Maine, and that area is uh, well known for its beautiful hills uh, that overlook the ocean. So, it was just a, a great place to grow up and a very close knit neighborhood and uh, a place where we we have frequented over the years to visit family and friends and to vacation. Awesome. Awesome. Now, after high school, you went out to college, correct? Yeah. yeah. Where'd you go to school? So I, I traveled out to uh, Upper New York State to St. Lawrence University. And that's actually where I met John. Oh, cool. That's awesome. And what were you studying while you were there? So I was a psychology major. And, you know, at one point, I, um, I thought I wanted to do something working with children. But I ended up working in the admissions office at uh, the college and giving campus tours and that type of thing and sort of made me think about doing something in higher education initially. Interesting. As successful as you were with what you did, you would have been perfect at that as well, I believe. Well, I did get to do that for a number of years uh, early in my career. So it yeah. was a great segue for me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mike? Hey, well, talking about your career, Elizabeth, maybe you can walk us through your career and give us a, a sense of some of the stops along the way. I know you've also had a very successful career working with a number of nonprofits. And maybe along the way, as you walk through your career path, you can tell us you know, what, how, how it was you got involved with nonprofit work. Does that sound okay? Absolutely. Well, as I was mentioning about uh, having worked in the college admissions, so I started out my career uh, at a couple of different colleges and was able to spend a number of years at Endicott College. Uh, and it was just a you know, wonderful experience, lots of opportunities to travel. And it was kind of working in that higher education frame that led me to the kind of the not-for-profit world. Uh, in fact, I think one of my first uh, not-for-profit jobs is I recruited Al Temkin as one of the volunteers for Junior Achievement, if I recall correctly. Wow, you're going way back now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Um, and, you know, I, I just I love the work that uh, and the mission of, of the different not for profits that I was uh, able to be involved with. Uh, you know, each move was, you know, something that was kind of a stepping stone for me to kind of go on maybe the, for the next level of responsibility and the next challenge. And, uh, you know, I was very fortunate to have them all right here on the North Shore. So can you touch on some of the names of the organizations that you've been involved with over the years? Sure. Um, you know, some of the ones that, uh, you know, most notable uh, certainly were the American Red Cross. And I spent uh, six years there uh, in a time that a lot of change happened and a lot of growth. Um, and actually also some of the biggest disasters in our local history, uh, interestingly enough. So uh, a challenging time, big fires. Uh, some of us will recall the Mother's Day floods that happened one year. 
Uh, and of course, Hurricane Katrina being the biggest of, of all of those. Uh, but, and people would think, well, that, that was, you know, down in uh, Louisiana and down in the South, Texas and all. Uh, what did that have to do with Massachusetts? Well, it, it's amazing the number of people that it affected here as well because of family members, people who left the South to come up to this area, whether we're seeking employment or, or housing. Um, and then the outpouring of support from the community was incredible. And the number of volunteers, we had about 250 volunteers that stepped forward to get training and to be able to go and assist in that. So it was really wonderful to see the support that was generated. May I add, uh, uh, not to interrupt you, Mike, but may I add that um, you also recruited me onto the board of the of the Red Cross, which I, which is one of the, the highlights of my background, and I very much appreciate you doing that. Um, but, but for the viewing public that might see this show, uh, Elizabeth brought to that uh, so many things to the Red Cross organization. But one of the highlights clearly was the the Heroes program that that you used to run, which which I think was one of the greatest things from a local community standpoint that uh, that we used to do. And I think uh, I want to make sure people know that you brought that to the table and made it a tremendous success for the local Red Cross organization. Yeah, that, that Community Heroes Breakfast, I think, was a, a wonderful thing for our community. And, you know, up to COVID, it had had a 16-year history, um, and hopefully we'll come back in the future. But if I could mention a few names, because, you know, like anything, you know, none of us ever do it alone. And Al was on that, that committee that started. Um, other folks like Cynthia Montalbano, Elaine Champagne, Joyce Hines. Um, Barry O'Brien. And one I want to mention too is our, our late friend, Fran Ditchner, uh, was on that inaugural committee for that. Uh, yeah. So, so many of those folks and stayed involved for so many years. And, and uh, sure. you know, like everything, it, it takes a village to make those happen. Yeah. Yep. Well, as Al mentioned, you know, that, that was probably one of the highlights of your career developing that, that great program. Uh, any other highlights you want to touch on organizations that you worked with? There are certain times in your career that you really felt, you know, you did special work or uh, you know, something that really stood out? Absolutely. Well, I think, you know, the, the mission that is so near and dear to my heart is hospice. And I spent many years at what started as Hospice of the North Shore and is now known as Care Dimensions. And the, the work that that organization does is really phenomenal. And it, it touches so many of our lives. Uh, I think all of us know, whether it's family or friends, uh, colleagues that have been affected with, uh, with end of life and needing really skilled, compassionate care. And one of the things I was, you know, very um, honored to be involved with and lead the way was the fundraising to expand the Kaplan Family Hospice House. Um, that's just a gem in our, our North Shore area, serves so many people uh, you know, that, that need that care at end of life. And it's a beautiful facility. So that was a, a real honor to be involved with that and to see the success that that has had serving our community. Certainly has. Work. Now, just as a quick change of subject here, Elizabeth, I, I, I understand that you, you were in India as an exchange student. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, that was goes way back um, to my high school years, but my family was always very involved with a program called AFS, which stood for American Field Service. And it, it's not unlike our rotary exchange program that we have. So uh, we host, hosted many students in my family over the years and including one year with a, um, a young man from Sri Lanka living with us. Um, so I just, I got that travel, you know, itch early and uh, wanted to, to go and have that same experience. So I lived with a family in Mumbai, India, and um, I'm still in touch with my sisters from there. Uh, and, wow. uh, you know, just a wonderful cultural experience um, uh, and a chance to see a, a different part of the world. That is awesome. Can you, how approximately, how old were you then when you, when you were there? I was 17. Seven, and you were there for how long, did you say? 
I was just there for actually a summer program. Isn't that neat? What a great experience, huh? Yeah, it was a wonderful experience. And when I got to college, I knew I also wanted to do some, you know, travel abroad. Uh, so I ended up uh, getting selected to go on a program to uh, Ni in Nairobi, Kenya for a semester. So I was able to experience, oh. um, you know, living in Africa, uh, you know, doing many safaris, uh, trips into the wilderness, uh, and just, it was, that too was, you know, another incredible learning experience. Good for you. Wow, that's tremendous. Um, at this time, we're going to take just a very quick break. Uh, for those of you watching, please pay attention to the upcoming video, which will give you a lot of education about the great work of the Beverly Rotary Club. We raise a lot of money for Beverly organizations. And they bought us our refrigerated van. They made a significant contribution to the restoration of Ellis Square. They helped us house a family experiencing homelessness. They bought us our bookmobile. They were actually the first ones to donate instruments to the high school band. They bought oxygen masks for our rescue dogs. They helped buy our school bus. They fund the annual Brad Gage ice cream social at Lynch Park every summer, and they even scoop the ice cream. Since 2014, they've supported the Cabot, funding preservation of this historic gem. They helped to fund the Council on Aging Van. They were a major donor to our new infant toddler playground. They bought an emergency generator for Harbor Lighthouse. We funded and built the gazebo. And we've got a green thumb. A lot of green thumbs. A lot of green thumbs. Not to mention sculptures. We planted more than 100 trees last year. They donated a shuttle bus stop that brings veterans to the VA hospital in Bedford. We're going to buy a water drone to clean plastics out of Beverly Harbor. They make a big difference for United Way. We give up to eight scholarships. Eight scholarships every year since the mid-1980s. And I was a recipient, and thanks to their help, I was the first in my family to go to college. It's more than just a local organization. There are 33,000 clubs in 200 countries with 1.2 million members worldwide. All that good adds up. Those do-gooders just keep doing good. We funded 13 wells in Kisumu, Kenya, bringing water to 13 schools. We contributed to Kalusha School in Pakistan, and later to the construction of a fabulous women's college. Hi, I'm Izzy Polito. I'm Mirabella Polito. I'm Andrea Polito. And we're all youth exchange students. We started the youth exchange program 13 years ago, partly because I was also an exchange student in 1979. I'm Aku. I'm from Finland. They hosted me as an exchange student. We funded Dr. Gordon Sato of Hamilton, who devised a way to grow trees in salt water in Senegal, Mauritania, and Eritrea. Our club has funded at least 20 life-changing surgeries around the world. And we've participated as non-medical volunteers in the Philippines, in Bolivia, and Venezuela. And remember, since launching the Polio Plus campaign over 30 years ago, the number of polio cases worldwide has dropped 99%. In 2019, clubs in the district joined the Polar Plunge to eradicate polio. The club's raised $90,000. Can we get back to Beverly, please? Over the past 10 years, we've raised, oh, I don't know, probably about $100,000. Try $400,000. Over the past 10 years, we've raised over $1 million. I have made some wonderful friends. It's downright inspiring. It's an important part of my week. It's a very important part of my week. Sometimes it's the best part of my week. It's one of the best things I do. Even if people still ask about the secret handshake. Welcome back, everybody. We hope you enjoyed the video, which gives you a really good cross-section of some of the interesting projects and in, uh, uh, organizations that the Beverly Rotary Club supports. Our guest here to, on today's show is Elizabeth Maycumber. And Elizabeth, again, so great to see you. Um, because this show is about the Beverly Rotary Club, let's touch a little bit on Rotary. You've been a Rotarian for a long time. Maybe you can just tell us a little bit about how you, how you learned about Rotary and how you got involved. Well, I actually have known about Rotary since I was a young child. Uh, my dad was a Rotarian, and he was one of those Rotarians that had perfect attendance for uh, almost 60 years, um, wow. so very committed to Rotary. And I grew up you know, seeing all the volunteer work that the club did in my community. 
um, having to, a chance to go to the father daughter, you know, breakfast and days uh, of Rotary and always, uh, you know, knew that Rotary was a special organization. Uh, so, you know, as an adult, when I had the opportunity to join, you know, I, I, I knew what I was getting into and was really excited about that, that chance to be, you know, a bigger part of the Beverly community. So how say, long uh, have you been involved in Beverly Rotary? <laughs> so I, I've been a member now for almost 23 years. Uh, and uh, I was uh, re recruited or, or sponsored by our, our, our dear friend, uh, Jack Good. Uh, I got to know Jack uh, while I was working at North Shore Music Theater, where I actually first met Mike. And, um, you know, when Jack said, oh, hey, why don't you uh, join Rotary and, and come on in? I was like, absolutely. This is a perfect time for that. Yeah, well, when you mentioned your dad and the fact he was a Rotarian for 60 some odd years with perfect attendance, I couldn't help but think about our friend Jack Good because he was the same type of guy and, you know, such an amazing person. And so let's left such an incredible legacy behind he touched so many people and helped so many people so um um it was nice to kind of draw that parallel Absolutely. so you were very familiar with rotary it's interesting you know some people that join rotary they have some familiarity with rotary maybe they had a parent that was involved in it other people kind of come in in other ways but uh, it's great that you had a chance to get a good flavor for rotary even as a child now that you've been in rotary for over 20 years elizabeth tell us about some of the types of committees and things you've worked on as part of your membership. Yeah. Well, I've had a wonderful opportunity to serve on a number of, of different committees. I've um, served on, this is my third term on the board under three different presidents. So it, it's been fun to have that experience, but probably the one that's nearest and dearest to my heart is been our scholarship committee. Uh, when I first joined Rotary, Rotary uh, you know, because probably because of my background in higher education, I really wanted to get on that scholarship committee and you had to kind of wait your turn. Um, fortunately, only took a, a couple of years uh, before I was able to get onto the committee. And uh, I had the you know honor of chairing that, I think, for about 16 years and, uh, you know, just meeting so many phenomenal students and just to see that the support that the Rotary Club provides for those students and their career goals is wonderful. And I think it's always <laughs> annually a highlight of our club to have that meeting each year where you you bring the students in and they and they chat with us, they have lunch with us, and they and they they share their experiences and going through the process and what their plans are for the future. Um, I, I just think it's a very exciting meeting. I think you've done an outstanding job with that committee, and we appreciate it. Well, thank you. It was it was so great to serve on that committee, and we have some wonderful new leadership that's involved, and and yep. new people getting involved, and that's always great to see those transitions happen. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. What'd you say if you, if you had to if you had to list Elizabeth uh, the top three or four things that that you've enjoyed most about being a Beverly Rotarian? What would those things be? Well, I, I, number one is easy. That's the people. Um, I, and I think that's true in any workplace. Uh, hopefully that's true in your family. And uh, it's definitely true in Rotary. Uh, we are certainly known as the most dynamic club uh, in the area. And I think all of us uh, would agree. I've learned so much in Rotary. You know, our weekly speakers just bring a wealth of knowledge and information you know, understanding of, of the community and what's going on both locally and, and nationally and internationally, uh, which has been great. So I've loved that. Um, the work projects that we do, you know, that also builds the camaraderie, things like building, you know, the gazebo uh, down at the, you know, park by the, by the library, um, the Red Cross van that money was raised for, you know, all, of course, all the scholarship programs, all the not-for-profits that Rotary supports, you know, across the board. And I love the fundraisers. Uh, those are fun. You know, I've served on the fundraising committee uh, for a number of years. And of course, Mike has been an incredible leader in that effort. And Al, you know, you're right there uh, for all of those events too. And we have fun. I mean, I think that's a big <laughs> part of Rotary. We, it, we it really is do good things, but we have fun too. And that's where the friendships and the camaraderie come from. Yeah, we do enjoy each other's company. There is, I don't think anybody would question that. That's, that's for sure. 
Um, now, Elizabeth, you've you've hosted people from I think from Italy uh, at your home over the years. Is that is that true? Yeah, well, the, the Rotary Club has a an exchange program, and I've done a couple different things with that. Um, one is the Rotary Youth Exchange Program, and uh, Bill Beckman was a, a big advocate of that in, in helping get that back on its feet because he actually was one of those students uh, back in his day. And he and I used to be the team that would interview all of our outgoing students from Beverly who would go to other countries and then, uh, you know, help bring the incoming students here. And I think that was a great experience for all of us and the families. Um, But one year there was a special program that happened where about 10 young men from Italy were brought over to uh, Beverly in the summer and, uh, they needed host families for those students. And so we signed up to host one and we hit the jackpot. We got the nicest young man um, from Cortona, Italy. And he just, you know, we all fell in love with him. Just the greatest guy. Um, He fits so well in our family. And we actually are still in touch with him to this day. Um, In fact, he he came, uh, he and his now wife traveled to New York for my, our daughter's wedding a couple oh, of years wow. ago. That's, that's and cool. my daughter and her husband went to their wedding in Italy when that happened. Wow. So, you know, just the doors that get opened and the friendships you make. It, it's so nice when you can, you know, keep those connections going. Absolutely. That's a wonderful story. Good job. Great job. Yeah, for anyone that hasn't had an exchange student, I know my wife, Linda, and I had a couple different students from France, and it was just such an amazing experience. And, you know, living in your home, they almost become another member of the family, and uh, they get involved in all the things the family is doing. And, and uh, it's just a, such a great experience for everybody involved on both sides of it. So I'm glad you had a chance to enjoy that. It sounds like you got, got a great kid. Yeah, yeah, we did. And I think all, all the students, it worked out well for all the families that year and was just a, a ton of fun. We did a lot of big group activities, you know, as well as having one-on-one time with our students. And, yeah. Awesome. Now, Elizabeth, aside from your, your busy career, you know, alongside that, I know you've been involved in other things more as a volunteer or helping out in different ways. Um, I know that one uh, organization that's near and dear to your heart is the Beverly Children's Learning Center, and you've You've done a lot of great work with them. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've done with them and how Rotary maybe has played a role in that? Yes. Yeah, so I was able to get involved with the on the board of directors for them uh, a few years ago. And uh, Brian DePeace, who's also on our club, also serves on that board. Uh, and, you know, I, I knew of uh, what we call BCLC, the Beverly Children's Learning Center, from uh, from its many years in Beverly serving the community. The um, and the Rotary Club support of it. So they were very fortunate to buy their own building on Cabot Street a few years ago and have done, you know, a number of fundraising efforts. Um, they have an incredible natural playscape uh, on the property. And just, I don't think there's anything else like that in the community. Um, so the support of the Rotary has been wonderful for that organization. And we're, we actually have another project that's going to happen very soon. Uh, we're helping to, we were able to get a, a gr- what we call a district grant, um, but funds that will come from our Rotary Club and our district to help them update their library. So um, got something right now that I've just gotten kind of scheduled and ready to go. We're going to be in there um, sorting books and getting those all organized for them. Uh, We have new bookcases, Uh, we'll be painting and refreshing the space so that they have a, you know, a lovely functioning library uh, at the school, at the center. Awesome. Good for you. It sounds like a really worthwhile project. Now, aside from BCLC, what are the types of things have you just been involved with over the years, maybe as a volunteer or, you know, things that other ways you kind of spent your free time? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, Beverly is a community that's really easy to get involved with, with organizations because there's so many good things out there to do. Uh, League of Women Voters was one where I was very involved and uh, served as president for a couple of years, met incredibly smart, talented women through that organization and, and learned so much about our, our local area. 
Uh, I've also did a lot through the schools, things like the PTO, uh, working on school plays, that type of volunteer work. Um, I served on the Beverly Community Council for quite a few years, uh, also serving as its president. I was on the board of health quarters. Um, so, you know, different things like that along the way. Uh, and I just always found that those experiences, you know, enrich my life and broaden my horizons. And uh, again, got to know wonderful t people by doing that. I think it would be a lot it's great to see you. Elizabeth and save a bunch of time if we simply asked you what you have not been involved with. In the <laughs> <laughs> well, the great thing about Beverly is there's so many opportunities. There's plenty more to do. That is so much the truth. That's for sure. So I know you, you and John have some changes that are coming up in your life. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So I did retire uh, about a year ago and John's uh, has that retirement uh, in, in his you know, uh, future too. And we've decided that we're going to relocate to uh, Camden, Maine, which is my hometown area uh, in mid coast, Maine. Um, you know, it's one of those things that's a mixed blessing. Of course, uh, we uh, we're, you know, I don't know, I I'm anxious about leaving the Beverly area for sure. There's a lot to love here and, you know, so many friends that, that I'll miss seeing on a, a more daily or weekly basis. But uh, that area really calls to us. It's a place where we've, we've spent a lot and, and had family there and all. So uh, that's going to be kind of, a, instead of going south, we're going north. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, they're going to be lucky to have you up in that community. Um, but when you guys get there, what are some of the things you're going to be doing to, to keep yourselves busy? Well, you know, that that remains to be seen in terms of, you know, some of the involvement, although I have already gone to a rotary meeting up there and they're heavily recruiting. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, you know, it's just it's rich in natural resources. Uh, we're fortunate to have a, a place on a lake there. So, you know, we nice. enjoy all the water sports. Um, kayaking is my favorite uh, to do that. There's a great ski area nearby. You know, we enjoy uh cross-country skiing and snowshoeing and uh just i, I have no doubt we're going to be keeping busy um, and we hope to do a lot of travel in the future too uh you know all the trips that we've we've wanted to take certainly and because our our kids are in connecticut and new york state we'll be doing lots of road trips absolutely good for you yeah that's great well we're going to certainly miss you and the and the and john and the beverly community for sure and uh, welcome the opportunities when you come down to visit to to visit with you and catch up and all of those great things. So I we'll wish you well. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Yeah, it sounds like some exciting changes ahead, but we wish you nothing but the best. Well, everybody, that's kind of finishes up today's show. Elizabeth Maycomb, it's so wonderful to have you on the show here today. And uh, we enjoyed hearing about your interesting career and all the things you've been involved in over the years. And, and good luck to you and John as you consider these next steps. For those of you at home, just to learn a little more about the Beverly Rotary Club, if you're so inclined, as we do have a website, beverlyrotaryclub.com, certainly visit our site, you know, learn about some of the different types of things that the club does. If anybody would like to consider attending one of our meetings or even being uh, even consider joining our group, we'd love to have you. Uh, we're always looking to expand and, and bring in new members, and uh, it's a wonderful organization and a great group of people. But Al Temkin, great to see you today down in Florida. You continue to be on the loaf down there and stay unproductive and get some sun and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Thank and, you, Mike, uh, I think. <laughs> <laughs>